it was really quite a story. She and my father in the 1960s went on a trip to Germany. It was their first time back, you know, since they had lived there and escaped. And um, she, they, it was Yom Ha'atzma'ut, you know, Israel Independence Day. So it must have been a small Jewish community at that time in Munich. And I think they must have introduced themselves to people or whatever, you know, we used to live in Munich and here we are in the Schindler family and the Olashinsky family. So somebody came up to my mother. She said it was a Professor Price, I believe, who was visiting from Israel. And he, this is what my mother told me. He said to her, I want you to meet me tomorrow at the Bayerische Staatsbibliothek in Munich because I have something to show you. So my mother met him there the next day and he, I guess, asked the librarian, whatever. There was a box of correspondence that my grandfather had left at that library. I mean, my grandfather was no longer living, but he, when he left Munich in the 1930s, I think realizing he was never going to return, but he felt like it was important to preserve these letters. And these were letters to him, not from him, from all over, Jews all over Europe. Uh, yeah, I see they were from, from Holland and, oh gosh, all over the place. Even there was a little letter from Israel. I mean, I, I have most of the, almost all the letters are in Yiddish, and my Yiddish isn't great, so I only have a vague idea. But it's interesting. There were some of the letters are very idealistic, and these are people who didn't know my grandfather but knew of him and were telling him like their life stories and talking about some some words about the Oilin movement. So it was people who are very idealistic. There was also correspondence from the various publications that my grandfather was writing for. So I don't know why, but he felt that it was important to preserve these and he couldn't take them with him when he was leaving Germany. So he left them at the library. So my mother, I guess, told me about it in the 1960s when she went on this trip. And then it was kind of left. And a few years ago, I was thinking about it and like, there's these letters in Germany. Who knows if they're still there even, you know, they might have been destroyed or lost. And so I kind of nudged my mother to call them. And they said that they would send her copies of the letters and that it would take a few months. So a few months later, my mother got this box of letters that each one was like carefully copied with a stamp from the Bayerische Staatsbibliothek and like a number, I guess they catalog them or something. So you get this box of letters, it's just amazing. And some of, the, I, I don't think we even looked, I mean there's just a, like a lot of letters <laughs> and in a language that I don't know, my mother knew Yiddish a bit, but not a lot. But some of the people she recognized, some a few of the names, like this was my Tanakh teacher, and he was killed in the whole Holocaust. And this was my music teacher, and he was killed in the Holocaust. But most of the letters, you know, none of us know who they were from. So that's been, like, really on my mind, because I feel like these, it shouldn't be lost. Like, my grandfather thought this was important to preserve, and I've got these voices of people. I think many or most of them were killed in the Holocaust. And like, I really want to do something with them. I mean, this is my thing. Like, I just feel like I don't want to leave them in this box because, you know, without, I don't know either. I'm not really not sure what to do. I've kind of looked around for, again, someone who wants to do a dissertation or do research because I don't have, I'm not in this field and I, I don't have the background. I mean, I'm now sort of trying to educate myself more because I may be the only one who's able you know, I don't know if I can find someone who's really wants to kind of take this on and research this. And, you know, maybe I can digitize it and so it's at least available to people. At any rate, so that's the story of the letters, which is still an unfinished story because they're still sitting there. They were in my mother's house and when she died a year ago, they're now in my house.